Now, if I told you how much I like brewing two and a half gallon batches of beer, well, this time I'm trying to brew over 10 gallons of beer for the first time. This is a collaboration saison I'm doing with Matt Jaggers of Jaggers Brewing Co. YouTube channel. Well, come along and see if I can actually produce over a 10 gallons of wort out of my 16 gallon kettle. Well, thanks for stopping by Cascade's Homebrew. My name is Brent. So for many years, I brewed with a nice quality stainless steel 10 gallon kettle. No ball valve though. It served me well when I was originally doing a kind of a crude fly sparge system with three vessels. And then a few years ago, when I moved to brew in the bag, it worked great for that as well. So last year I acquired a larger kettle. It's about 16 gallons. It's got a nice ball valve. It was from a friend of a friend who was getting out of home brewing. Well, it seems almost a little too big for my five gallon batches. There's a lot of headspace. My thermometer almost doesn't reach down into the wart. My wart chiller is hardly submerged. So that got me thinking, could I brew a larger batch, a double batch, maybe shooting for about 11 gallons of wort out of it so I can fill up two fermenters and get 10 gallons of packaged beer? And that brings me to the other part of this story. So I've ran into Matt Jaggers a few times online. He's got a YouTube channel called Jaggers Brewing Co. We've chatted messages on different forums and just replies on YouTube and such. Well, we got chatting about a collaboration. So we decided on kind of a farmhouse saison recipe that we would brew, same recipe with some different yeast, and that would give me a chance to try out maybe a yeast I haven't used before. So for this one, I tried Bootleg Biology Saison Parfait. Since Matt does a lot of kind of funky beers, some sour beers, I thought it would be good motivation for me. So I decided I would age part of the beer with Brett and part of it without. That way we could exchange the beers in a month or two that weren't Brett, and then I would have some beers in six months or so that would be kind of a, maybe a nice Brett character. First time using Brett. So I figured with the investment of six months or so in Brett, five gallons would be worthwhile. So it'd be good reason to brew a double batch of beer. So before we jump in the brew day, I just want to point out some of the equipment that I have that kind of made this possible. So I mentioned I have the 16 gallon kettle. So that's the one thing, a large kettle that can handle the volume for both the sparge and then the boil. So I also have a stir plate that I acquired not too long ago. So that's useful for helping me build up enough yeast for the full 10 gallon batch. In addition, I have my old 10 gallon kettle. So I use that kind of as my sparge vessel. If you didn't have a 10 gallon kettle, you could probably use maybe like a six and a half gallon bucket. There was four gallons of sparge water. So a five gallon bucket probably wouldn't work eh, unless you jigger the water around a little bit. So I also used a five gallon kettle really just to heat up my sparge water. I think that's optional though. A lot of people say you don't need to worry about heating up your sparge water. So I also have that ratcheting pulley that I can use that's hooked to my above deck that I can pull out the grain bag so I don't have to lift it up. It was a pretty big heavy. So you may want to either think about some way to be able to hold a bag like that or like use a ratcheting pulley like I used. So I also have a jaded hydra immersion chiller. It's an extra pile for immersion chiller, which I figured would work well for chilling down a 10 gallon batch. If you don't have an overpowered immersion chiller, it might just take you a little longer. You're also gonna need multiple fermenters. In this case, I used a seven gallon fermenter. Then I used a pair of my three gallon fermenters. You could use two of whatever you use to ferment five gallon batches. Well, okay, let's take a quick look at the recipe and the brew day and come back and I'll drink the beer and we can see how it turned out. As I mentioned, I wanted to build up my yeast a bit to support this double batch. So four days before brew day, I built up a three liter starter. So I won't go too much in the details here, but basically I used 300 grams of dry malt extract and I pitched one pack of Saison Parfait, then gave that enough time to build up some yeast. Check out the description for a link to the recipe if you want to see the details. But this is my farmhouse Saison collaboration with Matt Jaggers. To Saison, I'm shooting for 11 gallons or about 42 liters. I got just under that. So I wrote the recipe around a target 75% efficiency, targeting an original gravity of 1057, projected final gravity of 1005, which gave me an ABV of 6.9%. I start out by measuring my total amount of water. So this double sized batch is, uses almost 15 gallons total water, or 56 liters. It's really maxing out my kettle at this point. To that, I'll add one Campton tablet to remove chlorine and chloramine. From the total amount, I then remove the amount I'll need for my sparge, which is four gallons or 15 liters. That will be treated with 1.5 milliliters of lactic acid. The total mash water for this one is just under 11 gallons, 10.9 gallons or 41 liters. To that, I'll treat it with 10 milliliters of lactic acid 
And then also eight grams of gypsum to add a little bit of calcium and sulfate into the water profile. So I milled up all my grain and whoa, that sure is a lot of grain. So 23 and a half pounds or 10.7 kilograms in total. The grain bill for this recipe was around 70% of German Pilsner. I'm using malt from Avangard, about 19% rye malt, and then about 10% of torrified wheat. I think this was the first time I've ever brewed with torrified wheat before. The target mash for this one is 60 minutes at 152 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 67 degrees Celsius, with also a 60 minute boil. So as the mash was going, I went ahead and heated up the four gallons or 15 liters of sparge water. I don't know if it's that critical to use hot water for the sparge, but I went ahead and heated it up anyways. So I treated that with 1.5 milliliters of lactic acid. With the 60 minute mash done, it was time to pull out the grain bag. My ratcheting pulley made the process fairly straightforward. It was still a bit heavy, especially since all the rye and the wheat meant it drained pretty slow. My girlfriend Mel was over for the day, so she stopped by at this point to marvel at my feats of strength. I then gave the grain bag a good squeeze, trying to get out as much of the liquid as I could. And then it was time for the sparge step. So I'm doing what's called a dunk sparge. It's similar to maybe a batch sparge. So I first move the grain bag over to my 10 gallon kettle. And then I add in all the sparge water. I give that a good stir and then let it set for several minutes. And once that's done, it's time to repeat the prior process. So I use my pulley to hold up the grain bag. I try to get as much of the liquid out as I can by squeezing and also using hanging it to drip dry. I add the sparge volume back into the main kettle, which is full of wort that's been heating up toward the boil. I end up with just a touch less volume than planned, but with a couple extra gravity points. So not bad for trying out a new process. As I approach the boil, it's time to add in my hops. I've only used this hop spider a few times. For this batch, I noticed I needed to use a clamp to keep the rim up above the level of the wort. So the kettle is pretty darn full at this point. So I'm sure to stay vigilant to avoid a messy boil over. So back at the start of the boil, I added in my two ounces or 57 grams of East Kent Golding hops to add a little over 16 IBUs. With 10 minutes left in the boil, I go ahead and add in a tablet of Werflock and yeast nutrient and also my wort chiller to sanitize. And then with five minutes left in the boil, I had two ounce or 57 grams of Saz hops, which adds about four IBUs. So at the end of the 60 minute boil, it's time to chill down the wort to pitching temperatures. As expected, it took a bit longer than a standard batch, but with my jaded hydro chiller and a reasonably cool December tap water, uh, this process took, I think, maybe 15 minutes. I then transferred the wort into my fermenters. First, I filled a pair of three gallon for monster fermenters, and then I filled my seven gallon for monster fermenter. My target was 11 gallons of wort at 1057, so I actually got about 10 and a half gallons at 1061. So I just rolled with that. I was pretty happy with how close I hit my targets anyways. So remember, the yeast for this one is bootleg biology saison parfait. So I took the start I have and divided it up into three containers, trying to have appropriate pitch rates into each fermenter. I don't have room in my fermentation chamber for all of these fermenters. So I started off fermentation, just kind of trying to use ambient temperature, control the temperature, try to keep everything around that sort of 72, 74 degrees or 72 to 73 degrees Celsius range. After 13 days of fermentation, I pitched my pack of bread into a five gallon glass carboy, and then I transferred half of the batch into the carboy. My understanding is that Brett takes four, six months or so to do its magic, and then it can improve over a year or two. As of now, it's been working away for about three months. I've not taken a sample yet, but I still see some bubbles in the ward and airlocked activity. So I assume it's still working away. I'll have to cycle back to this one. Then a few days later, I packaged the other half of the batch. One of the fermenters was transferred into a keg. The other half was bottled. In my tasting video with Matt Jaggers, we both sampled and kegged versus bottled versions of the beer. They ended up being much more different than I would have expected. So the final stats on this one, efficiency, almost right on target, I measured 76%. Like I said, just a little bit higher OG of 1061 and a little bit less volume. Final gravity came in at 1008. So the attenuation was at 86%, which gave me an ABV of right 7%, which was almost right on target with my 6.9% prediction. So here's a bottle condition version. I had planned to just get a small pour off the tap, but then I forgot I needed to clear out a keg. So I moved about five bottles worth of beer out of the keg into bottles and set them aside. I didn't have one of those cold, but luckily I had a bottle condition beer cold. I haven't actually tasted side by side the bottle condition 
versus the keg condition, I want to give them a little bit of time and I'm actually meeting up with Matt later today and we'll open them up so then I'll get a chance to try them in side by side. Well let's go ahead, crack this one open and see how it turned out. So the last pours of the keg were definitely very clear. This one has definitely uh, got a haze to it. I actually see a little kind of some particles floating around in it. But hey, hazy beers are cool, right? Color on it is quite nice. It's like a kind of a golden, a little bit of some orange hints to it. So it's got a lot of color for being a very simple grain bill with, uh, I believe it was what, Pilsner and rye and wheat. Oops, I jumped ahead and took a taste. Let's go for aroma. It's got some really nice, pleasant, uh, kind of, you know, Saison characters. What would I describe it as? A little bit of, I'll say a little bit of pepper, a little bit of kind of lemon, maybe a little bit of some apple-y. Sometimes I get something that I, I kind of think is like sulfur in some Saisons. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's actually what it is. I think maybe it's more just a, a clove and pepper character. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the amount of character and just the, the general aroma in the beer. If we go in for a taste on it, you know, it's, it's got a lot of flavor. Often the Saisons I'm going for is something like a Saison du Pont. I think the Saison du Pont's fairly dry, easy drinking. This one definitely has a little more body than that. I think it's probably just because, you know, it's got so much rye, so much wheat in it. But it's really a nice drinkable beer. I mean, it's, it, it's very refreshing. So overall, I'm glad that Matt kind of pushed this recipe. It's got a lot of rye, a lot of wheat. It's got that torrified wheat that I haven't used before. It's just got a little bit more of that kind of farmhouse vibe to me. Just uh, a lot of character. It's got more body than say the Saison DuPont or some of the other, the rye ones that I've been brewing with a maybe 15% rye and then other just uh, Pilsner and a little bit of character malt. So as far as the hoppiness on this one, the bitterness level, you know, it's fairly low. I think you could easily boost it up a little bit if you wanted to balance out a little bit of the sweetness. Um, do I get a hop aroma? It's kind of hard to pick out hop aroma, just so much aroma that's in there, so much of the Saison aroma. I might get a little bit of that sauce character in there. And overall, on the brew day, I mean, it was a lot of work. By the end of the day, I was definitely was feeling tired, kind of lifting stuff out, moving stuff around. But since I got some practice doing that method, I think it should be easier next time. It was kind of cool to be able to get out, you know, 10 and a half gallons of wort. And that let me do some experiments, right? So I was able to do half of it on bread. I was able to set two and a half gallons into bottles, two and a half gallons into kegs, play around a little bit with, you know, bottling techniques, and just try out different things. So that's cool. Definitely was worth it. So I'm definitely interested in brewing some other larger batches on the system. I'm thinking I could brew, say, seven and a half gallon batches, enough to get two and a half gallons, two and a half gallons, two and a half gallons, or five gallons and two and a half gallons. So one thing I think would be interesting would be a double batch and taking that wort and making, trying to make two completely different beers. So one thing I noticed looking at some Kolsch recipes, they look very similar to a Saison. It'd be kind of interesting. Kolsch yeast versus Saison. I think you could also do some other options like that. If you have any ideas for split batches with different yeast, maybe different hops to try to drive different characters to end up with five gallons of fairly unique beer, well, make sure you let me know. So I hope you found the video interesting. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button and stick around and look for my video with Matt Jaggers of Jaggers Brewing Co. We're getting together later this evening to drink beers so I get to try the, some of the ones he sent me. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty excited about putting together that video. So hopefully you check that out and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.